Welcome to another episode of Wedding Pro Tips. Today we're gonna to be talking about how to grow your business. So a lot of times as creatives, we're always talking about the ins and outs of photography and filmmaking, but hardly are we ever focusing on the business side of things. And I understand that. We're more passionate about being creative and being filmmakers and photographers than we are about being business owners. But the truth is that we all need to make a living. So I wanna help you today on how to create a successful business and to make smart decisions. So here are seven tips that I've learned over the last eight years of running my own wedding business. Let's get into it. Tip number one, work hard. It's gonna take hard work in order to have a successful business. I know we always want that secret shortcut or we want that secret tip on how to be successful, but the truth is it's just simple, honest, hard work. There is no shortcut like in Mario Kart. The answer is that you just gotta work really hard in order to have successful business. Eventually the hard work will pay off. For example, in my own career, I've been running my wedding business now for eight years. That's eight years of shooting weddings, editing the weddings, blogging, networking, creating my own company. It's a lot of hard work I've put into it, but it's resulted in success. Tip number two, shoot every wedding as if it's your last. Especially when you're beginning your company, every single wedding is your next portfolio piece. So you wanna make sure that when you're shooting weddings that you're doing your absolute best so you have the best possible photos and the best possible footage to work with to create that next portfolio piece. Tip number three, be the best photographer and filmmaker, but as well the best person. Oftentimes I assume that people have chosen my company based on my photos or my films, but the truth is often people have chosen me based on my personality. If we're honest with ourselves, most often couples are hiring the photographer or filmmaker that they've met at a wedding or they've heard about from another friend and most often those referrals are happening because someone met you, got to know who you are and thought to themselves, man this guy's such a good person, I really want to hire him for my wedding. In some ways there's always a little bit of a blow to the ego because you realize that couples are often actually hiring you for who you are and not for what you create. Of course it helps to have great photos and great films as a portfolio but as well it helps so much to be a great person. Because if you leave each wedding generally connecting with others and leaving a good impression of who you are, you're bound to book a gig for the next season. So when you're shooting weddings, make sure you're not focusing just only on the photos and the film, but as well on connecting with others and leaving a good picture of who you are. Tip number three is organic marketing. This is the kind of marketing that's not gonna cost you a penny. Word of mouth is so important when it comes to spreading your wedding photos and your wedding films. So when you're at weddings, make sure you're putting on your A game, getting to know the people, leaving a good impression of who you were, and as well, making sure you knock out the photos and the video because that's gonna make people wanna spread the word about your company. As well, whenever I finish my photos or my video, I love to right away send a link from my website that the couple then can share to others because you know if I'm putting the wedding film out there or showing the wedding photos, people are gonna engage with it in some way. But when the bride and the groom themselves share the video and the photos, people are gonna engage with it way more than from your own company. So make sure that you're getting the bride and the groom and the family and their relatives and their friends to share the videos or share the photos because that's gonna spread word of mouth about your company and it's not gonna cost you a penny. Tip number four is getting featured on wedding blogs. We've had the honor with Heart Visuals being featured on so many numerous blogs and it has helped us so much to build our business. You know, we've been featured on Stanley Pretty, Junebug Weddings, Green Wedding Shoes, and the list goes on. Submitting your weddings to wedding blogs doesn't cost you a thing. It's a great way of getting exposure from new audiences. Mind you, they do take some time to submit and the competition is quite high. So don't bother sending me some mediocre wedding only send the best of the best because those are the only ones that are gonna have a chance of getting featured on these high quality wedding blogs. Many of our clients found us by seeing us on different wedding blogs and the greatest part of that is it didn't cost us a dime. So make sure that when you're not shooting weddings or editing your photos or wedding film, to use that time to get your work featured on different wedding blogs. It's an easy and free way to get more exposure for your work. Tip number five on how to grow your business is improving your SEO. SEO basically stands for search engine optimization. And basically what that means is that when people write wedding photography or wedding videography, Toronto or Finland, what comes up first when you're Googling that? And to be honest, this has probably been one of my biggest weaknesses with my business. And the reason for that is, is I've lived in Canada, I've lived in Finland, and I've lived in Australia. And I haven't wanted to really 
put myself in just one country. So it's really hard when it comes to SEO because usually you wanna put certain keywords and certain phrases that are gonna be consistent through all your work and through your website. But if you do know where you wanna plant yourself and where you're gonna live for the next few years, make sure that you use those certain keywords to get you the best search engine optimization. So that means, for example, whenever you're posting photos or doing anything, you would use certain keywords like Toronto wedding photographer. So that when someone Googles Toronto wedding photographer, you're gonna be the first one that pops up. It does require a lot of work, but in the long term, it's gonna really help you out. Because if we're honest, oftentimes when couples are trying to find a photographer or videographer, they're usually just gonna put the city name and wedding photographer. And it would be really sad that if you have amazing work, but people are just not finding you because you're not great at SEO. So make sure you invest some time into SEO, do some research about it, and make sure that you get your name onto the top list. Tip number six, paid advertising. Now with Facebook or Instagram, you can do targeted ads. And the reason why these are really beneficial is that instead of just throwing out a random ad into some sort of place that you don't even really know who's gonna see it or what the demographic is gonna be, with Facebook or Instagram ads, you can target the group and the audience so specifically. You can choose, for example, the age, their gender, their relationship status, whether they're single, engaged, for example, is probably a good idea to do if you're in a wedding business. And that will make sure that the right people are gonna see the ad for your business. So try it out sometime. Put out a Facebook ad for your company, you know, target 20 to 35 year old females who are engaged in your area of your city, and then put on, for example, $100. And just see what happens. You know, even if you book one wedding gig, it's gonna be worth it. So try out paid advertising. It's usually the last thing that I resort to because there's so many other ways to advertise your company in a free way. But if you feel like you're just not booking enough weddings, try out some Facebook or Instagram advertising. Tip number seven, network with other wedding photographers or videographers. You see, most of the time when we're doing advertising, we're gearing it mostly towards wedding couples. And that's one way to get work. But if you network with other wedding photographers and videographers, it's a whole world of opportunities when it comes to getting more work. For example, here in Finland, I have a few wedding photographers that we always just share the workload. So, you know, there's only a certain amount of weekends that you can shoot weddings and eventually you're gonna be booked. And then when you get an acquire for that same date, what we do is we share it with other wedding photographers. And this is a great way to make sure that everyone's got their whole wedding season booked. It's really easy, but you gotta make sure that you're working with people that you trust and that you're all equally benefiting each other. If you don't have close relationships with any wedding photographers or you feel like you don't know anyone that you can really trust in that way, you can also offer people you know, to pay for some referrals. For example, you could give a $100 gift card to some restaurant or to the movies or whatever as an exchange for being able to get some referrals and booking those wedding gigs. There's small things to give back as an appreciation for someone helping you out. Guys, I hope that these seven tips have helped you out and given you new ideas on how you can improve your wedding business. Guys, if you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button and as well, like and comment below on any other ideas that you wanna see in the Wedding Pro Tips series. Also, if you feel like these Wedding Pro Tips series have been super helpful, but you're noticing that you just wanna learn even more, I do offer one-on-one -on -one mentoring sessions. And basically what these include is a one hour session where I go over three to five different topics that you're interested in learning more about. And as well, we have a constructive feedback portion where I go through your work, your website, your social media, your branding, and I give you constructive feedback on how you can take it from a you know, seven to a 10. So feel free to email me at tepo at heartvisuals.com and I'll make sure to link that below. As well, a lot of you guys have been asking how do I color grade my wedding films and I'm gonna give you the secret. For almost every single one of my wedding films, I use the same LUT from my own love pack, the Cine Perfect Skin Tone. So if you haven't checked that out, I'll link that as well below. Buy it, try it on your wedding films. I know that'll help and work for you. And so that's it for this week's episode. Hopefully you enjoyed it and I will see you next week.